We have freedom in this country, and that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? And you can, we have freedom of religion and freedom of speech, and that's one of the cool things about being an American. Battery Park, in the heart of downtown New York, and a hymn to America in the last of the summer sunshine. New York is the richest city and the richest country in the world. But just a few miles uptown live some of the poorest communities in America. In the Bronx, three grandchildren try to bring their grandmother up to date with the latest fashions. I like this one But two people are missing from this picture. Veronica Momadou recently died of AIDS. It was left to her mother Regina to bring up three granddaughters and a grandson, Garfield, who's HIV positive. Veronica and Regina had wanted to have a say in the treatment Garfield received. But instead, the New York authorities insisted Garfield stay on drugs and medicines, which even the other children could see were making him ill. When he was, when he was drinking the medicine, sometimes at night, it was in the summertime too, at night he would say, Mommy, I'm cold, I'm cold, or he would itch his body all over, nonstop. And every time he said um, he was cold, my aunt went to an animal to put the heat on. He put the heat up a lot of times, but he kept saying he was cold. Is this why your family decided to stop the medicine? Yeah, my aunt stopped it because he wasn't feeling comfortable. And he started to get well. But when she went for a checkup, they, they gave him the medicine again without her knowing it. And did he get sick again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what type of medicine they were given. If I is allergic to sulfur, if they give it to him, that is scratching all over his body and he caught his appetite, you know, eat, and he started getting skinny and skinnier. Convinced that the medicines were making things worse, not better, they turned to their hospital doctor for advice. He made an unexpected offer. My daughter told me, she said when she went to see the doctor, at that time it was the child's appointment day. The man said they will be giving her $25 for a month if they can put the child on an experimental basis. She said, I will think about it. And she said, no. Then the doctor told her, he said, you, you, will, be, you will regret it. Regina's daughter took Garfield off all medication. Almost immediately, his health improved. Then there was a knock on the door. They came to take the child. And uh, they came with police. I, I think it was three to four police men. In New York, you don't need a court order to take a child from its parents. The Administration for Children's Services, or ACS, has exceptionally strong legal powers to decide what's best for the city's kids. They're essentially out of control. Uh, I've had many ACS caseworkers tell me, we're ACS, we can do whatever we want, and they usually get away with it. Garfield simply disappeared into the system. One of 23,000 children placed either with foster parents or in children's homes. This Catholic-run home, the Incarnation Children's Centre in Harlem, is where many HIV children end up if their parents or guardians refuse to medicate them. For years, it was the centre of highly controversial and secretive drug trials on orphans and foster children as young as three months old. At the time, it did not occur to me that anything was wrong because we were told by the doctors that these were all 
steps that were going to happen to be expected because they were all HIV positive. Jacqueline Hoja is a pediatric nurse who worked at Incarnation for five years. If they were vomiting, if they lost their ability to walk, if they were having diarrhea, if they were dying, then all of this was because of their HIV infection and to be expected and that we were doing the best we could to save them from that. Jacqueline was completely unaware that she was party to experiments on children. It didn't come as my first thought at all to question the medication and since I had worked with pediatric AIDS for many years and had given the medication, um, I just faithfully gave it as I was told by the doctors. We found documentation listing some of the experiments carried out on HIV children at the home. One was for treating herpes. Another involved giving children double doses of the measles vaccine. And yet others involved whole cocktails of drugs with side effects admitted by the manufacturers including severe stomach pain, muscle wastage, organ failure and many more. Side effect is a euphemism for, for undesired direct effects. The effects of the anti-HIV drugs are, are quite serious. In fact, in fact, if you look at the uh, insert that comes with these drugs, you will see virtually all of them will have a black box warning label, which is the highest, se most severe warning that these drugs can have and still be uh, prescribable to human beings before they're taken off the market. They're lethal. 3,000 miles west of Manhattan, Dr. David Rasnick is internationally renowned for his work on numerous diseases, including cancer. I'll scroll it up a little so we can see the, the years and everything. And it's AIDS cases, deaths, and... He studied the effects of HIV drugs on patients, particularly children. The young are not completely developed yet. The immune system isn't completely mature until your person's in their teens, typically. We asked for his opinion on some of the incarnation trials. We're talking about serious, serious side effects. Didanosine, all by itself, is, is, is a very dangerous drug. Zidovidine is our fa uh, famous AZT, which has never been shown to be life-saving. It also causes severe anemia. Nevirapine is the drug that also causes that Steven Johnson syndrome, the flaking of the skin, and it's very, very dangerous and debilitating. It's horrible and painful and also lethal. These children are going to be miserable. They're absolutely going to be miserable. They're going to resist taking them after a while. They're going to probably take them when people give it to them. They're going to suffer so much AZT all by itself. They're going to have cramps. They're going to have diarrhea. They're not going to eat. Their, their joints are going to swell up. They're going to roll around on the ground. You can't touch them. And I understand that the Incarnation Center, uh, they sent them to the hospitals, these children, and they cut a hole in their belly and put a feeding tube in their belly and administer the drugs to the children who don't take these drugs. My friend Jolie said she never, never, ever let to take a medicine. So they still held her down, forced it down her throat. And I saw her. What would, would you like this? This boy spent most of his life at incarnation. Age 15, after years on drug tests, he has the physique of a 10-year-old. He didn't want to show his face, but he did want to tell the story of what happened to him in the home. I did not want to take the medications, and I did not want to, uh, you know, do all that stuff. But they insisted? Yeah, if you want to get out of there, you have to do what they say, or else you're not going anywhere. His medical records, which we've obtained, prove that he was enrolled in drug trials while living at Incarnation. If a child refused to take the medicine, a peg tube was inserted directly into the stomach, something he warned his friends about. And I used to tell her every single day, please take 